All right, this one is called Fate Zero's infamous spinning scene is genius. This is talking about Tokiomi and Risei, Kotomi and Risei, circling around the poor Kide as they gaslight him and make him participate in the grill war and cheat with them, right? This is from Replay Value. Give it to me. Hello and welcome to Replay Value. All right. Fate is home to a lot of memes. People die when they are killed, basically everything that Carnival Phantasm touches, and straight up that's part of what makes Fate such a great series, yeah. or vice versa. I know of the Paduru memes, I know of, I guess, it, it, my Fate knowledge is limited to like FGO and random clips here and there. Like, I have seen, like, these, like, cat things, too, which are really cute. Part of what makes Fate such a great series, or vice versa. I wouldn't trade the memes for anything. Well, maybe- It's crazy how, like, happy they are, right? Because, like, the show itself is so fucking dark and sad, but I guess these different uh, spin-offs or different side stories kind of, like, heals the soul. It's like a balancing act. Vice versa. I wouldn't trade the memes for anything. Well, maybe the elimination of Apocrypha from the canon or the ability to watch Fate Extra without getting- Is Apocrypha that bad? ...and bored. But there's one scene that gets memed on pretty hard which I think is straight up unfair to the franchise. Because it's done to keep visual engagement high and mm. maintains narrative value. That'd be from Fate Zero's first episode. I love the spinning scene. Because in this current modern era of anime where everything is just fucking- garbage isekai min-maxed where background assets are just copy pasted cgi just so lackluster you can't tell that this is a passion project ufotable went out of the way to animate a conversation scene and they didn't have to do this but they flexed their budget they showed us a dynamic way of conversing and it was just such a good experience and the scene is the introduction of kotomine kire or the funniest part is that Risei is blind, yet he's circling perfectly, and I, I think that they practiced this, bro. Before Kirei got here, Tokiomi and Risei, they practiced the circling shit. I talk about cinematography a decent amount on this channel, and that's because it is so easy to overlook how something like lighting affects our enjoyment and understanding of a scene. Exposition can be wicked hard to do properly, especially when you're dropping a lot of it all in one go. What I see recently with exposition, Eminence and Shadow does it really well, where it's just fan service. <laughs> it's just amazing fan service. Remember that scene where Alpha and, and you know, um, Shadow, they're talking in the room and it's exposition. But the entire visuals is just Alpha slowly taking Shadow's clothes off and just, it's just crazy. And no one's focusing on the dialogue, they're too busy. So it's, 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 a, it's a smart way to keep people from this. Well, they're not even focusing on the plot, but at the very least, they're engaged in the scene that they're seeing. Hell, the phrase info dump exists for a reason. And I've talked about in the past why varying shot types can keep a viewer visually engaged mm -hmm. while getting through some lengthy and necessary exposition. I don't think Fate Zero does this perfectly by any means. It's about 47 minutes long after all. It would be a hell of an accomplishment if they maintained brilliance the whole way through. I won't Honestly, for an anime that's from like 2011, I don't even, I, I can only name a couple handful of animes this, like, in the modern era that, like, is better in Fate Zero. Like, the quality is on another fucking level, man. And Ufotable could do this in 2011, yet, you know, in the modern era right now, all we get is just a bunch of garbage slop with maybe one or, th like, two or three, like, special hidden gems, which are studios that are made from passion projects, which then ends up being sold off to a bigger entity and then just repeat the cycle of it becoming a, just another fucking cash cow to milk. I won't even say the scene I'm talking about today is perfect because the fact that so many people miss what it's going for is pretty indicative of a failing. Our establishing shot places us three years ago, a five year jump from our opening sequence in Italy, which is then followed by this shot. Tokiomi is facing towards the two Kotomines, placing him as the initial focus for the sequence. It gives him a sense of leadership and gravity as the most important person in the room. He yep. raises his hand to- I thought that this was Kide when first watching it, because again, my knowledge of F F Fate is just FGO, and I just remember Kide having long hair and eating mapo tofu and saying Yorokobe Shonen, but like, nah man, this is Tosaka Rin's dad. ...show his command seals, which is immediately followed by Kirei doing the same. This mm -hmm. small motion and the zoom onto the crimson markings 
keys the viewer in that this is why the group has assembled here, and subtly places Kirei and Tokiomi as equals in at least one regard. Our next shot is a wide shot, giving us a lot of space between the two church members and Tokiomi. Again, yeah, and then the background visuals to the assets, right? It's very vibrant, it's very colorful. And yes, there's some dark colors here, but like, considering all this shit, I, like, it just feels more lively than most of the anime wide shots that I see this season. And indicating leadership on the part of the individual facing the other two, giving him the authority right back as he answers Kirei's question about the Holy Grail War. There's also a subtle lighting gradient in the shot. Tokiomi's next to a bright lamp, which mm. diffuses as we go further right, along with bright windows on the left of the shot. We get okay. two nice close-ups of Kirei and Tokiomi, placing them on opposite sides of the shot to make the viewer's eye move across the screen. Risei steps forward, giving us a look at the differences in their attire, with Risei's attire and larger cross Purple. becoming of someone more established in the church. The following shot of wine being poured into a glass, or maybe more importantly, the sound of it, immediately mm -hmm. brings the focus back to Tokiomi, as though he's vying for supremacy, even in terms of just screen time and focus. At this point, the spinning begins. It's and when he started walking, I'm like, what the hell is he doing right now? And then Reese started walking, I'm like, oh my god. It's the first time you really see the checkerboard pattern in the floor, which is a good indicator of what this scene is outlining. A strategy. Since it drops mm, the plan and- Didn't even notice that. Checkerboard. Strategy. A strategy. Since it drops the plan and goal in one fell swoop, those of you who are paying attention already know what category this is. Off the rails. But the spinning is multifaceted. Obviously on the face of it, it's attempting to create something visually appealing through cutting and tracking. But then yeah, but look at this, right? He's walking and the background scenes are moving together, right? It just makes everything feel much more alive rather than just like a static info dump, which is pretty much all of Tensura Season 3 right now, until Part 2 at least. That's not the only element at play here. Thematically, it's setting up this partnership between Tokiomi and Risei, how they're both working towards the same goal, and that Kirei's at the center of making sure that the strategy succeeds. Since Tokiomi and Risei are moving in the same direction, equidistant from each mm -hmm. other, there's an equal pull on Kirei from both sides, maintaining visual and thematic equilibrium. There's also a hypnotic element. I feel like the walking scene also kind of demonstrates who's in power here. Even though everything has been established that Tokiomi is the one in charge and Risei has brought his son here to listen and to kind of cheat in the game together, them spinning with Kire in the middle to be listened to, right? And like, we're telling him exactly the rules of the Holy Grail War and exactly what we're going to do to cheat. It just feels like it's like a commanding presence, two people spinning around the person in the middle who is being commanded. Visual and thematic equilibrium. There's also a hypnotic element to it. The way the characters move so smoothly against the background in practically perfect lockstep. It places you in a trance, which is fitting in this case as opposed to other shows that have a tendency to place you in a trance-like state, because here Tokiomi and Risei want Kirei to be susceptible to their whims. Mm -hmm. They want his cooperation with the plan. Exactly, right? It's like two predators hawking around a prey in the middle and that they've made with the way that it's structured it's like a drain everything is going towards kire including the focus he's always at the center even on profile shots our cuts to tokiomi and risei are centered on kire's position as they look towards him as i said at the top this is kire's introduction it might also introduce the other two characters but he's the focus narratively even as Tokiomi attempts to hold leadership and focus within the context of the scene. The end of the spin places the three characters in line with Kire- Perfectly. You cannot tell me they did not at least do one rehearsal round of this. In my mind, before Kire showed up, these two did the whole fucking thing multiple times to perfect their choreography. And remember, this dude is fucking blind again in the middle, Tokiomi and Risei still aligned in their counterclockwise direction. We end with a return to focus on Kirei, even as Tokiomi is the last one to speak, zooming in on his eyes just in case you weren't sure who you should have been paying attention to. The aftermath of the spinning is a great bit of foreshadowing. Tokiomi and Risei stand high above watching Kirei leave, as though they've guaranteed their preferred end result. The two masterminds of the strategy gleeful that Kirei is on board, which Risei never doubted because of his belief that his son would die if the church asked it of him. But as the sequence comes to a close and we return to Kirei, we watch this man walking away from the two and raising mm -hmm. his hand above his chest, placing the command seals in front of his cross, suggesting that being a master might eventually come before his devotion. Mmm, hinting at Kirei's betrayal, which was 
kind of shown in episode two, but that was all part of the plan. But now we've seen multiple episodes of Phase Zero, and you can see that Gilgamesh is corrupting Kirei's purity and innocence of being a homeschooled child and saying, hey, bro, smoke some weed, man. And he tried it, and now the different pleasures and desires it may come at a cost of Tokiomi. ...and to his faith and in turn, his mission. Again, I don't think this scene is perfect, but I do think it had one clear goal in mind. I, th I thought it was an amazing scene. I thought it was one of the coolest ways of doing exposition, a huge lore dump where most people are zoned out, but due to, again, the choreography, the whole walking and the different backgrounds moving together, it was such a fun time. Strong focal point on Kirei, even as Tokiomi dominates the conversation. And in that regard, it definitely succeeds with a good use of cinematography to keep the exposition engaging and thematically relevant. Even though the actual construction of the shots is somewhat lacking, in terms of framing a design that could have deepened the thematic setup or foreshadowing, it's still a strong scene, which is what I expect from UFO Table's Fate Productions. UFO Table. UFO Table. Ufotable. Hold the fuck up. Their name has UFO in it. Unidentified flying objects table is the studio. What is the secret to their? I, I never thought too much about this, but he just said UFO table. I'm like, wait, wait a minute, UFO table. Hmm, what's going on here? Even if we'll just meme them to death afterwards, there's more to talk about from Fate Zero's pilot episode. Well, honestly, the entire series, especially some political philosophy questions, which is more my jam than Dead or Alive's one hit wonder, but we'll save that for some time in the future. All right. Hope you enjoyed. Leave a Thank you for giving us the breakdown of, I don't know, the walking, the spinning scene. Like, there's definitely. When I'm looking at watching anime, my analysis is based on the dialogue and the plot at hand, but definitely the production value and the different things that I never even realized. Like, for example, the ground, right? The checkering. Like, I didn't realize that the checkering is supposed to hint something else, like a little Easter egg to show you that, you know, this is, you know, we're, we are strategizing right now. And there's a lot more different things to kind of highlight the importance of this spinning scene rather than just a meme scene. I think it is both a meme scene and something wonderful, but that's it for me. Please. Go check out Mr. Replay Values channel. Maybe if you guys like this kind of content, we can cover more of his content. I'll see you next time.